Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to another edition of The Lonely Wrist. We have Justin, myself, and Chris from Vero Watch Company uh, gracing us with his presence today. Chris, welcome to the show. Hey, good to have, uh, good to be here. Thank you. What's going on? So, yeah. Chris? <laughs> All righty. So, we'll get into this thing pretty quickly. Um, if you guys didn't know, uh, Vero's been making a lot of waves recently in the market. Um, they are kind of an up and coming big player. Um, they recently just released one of their, uh, Smokey the bear watches, uh, as a <laughs> kind of limited release, which is pretty cool. We're, we're going to get into that a little bit later. Um, mm -hmm. but yeah, like I said, Chris, we're just going to kind of give you the mic, ask you some questions, um, get to know you and the brand a little bit better. Uh, and that way the audience can kind of, uh, you know, get some details on that and we'll go from there if that sounds good. Sounds great. All righty. Um, so if you could tell us, Chris, what's the origin story, uh, behind Vero watch company? Yeah. So, um, so I, I, I kind of came from a, a different world, like, uh, <laughs> um, no worries. I got a dog too. So he's locked <laughs> out. He's locked out right now. So, um, I, I came from, uh, a, like triathlon and running and in that world and, and, um, in addition to competing, I, I had like a retail shop and, and events and things like that. And um, I had that for about eight years. Um, it, it, but like pretty much the whole time I was like, uh, you know, in love with watches and obsessed with watches. We would, you know, I, like if you know, we go to Vegas for like the trade show things, you know, like in our bike and I would always, you know, take an extra day or two to, you know, go scope out all the watch shops and, and do all that stuff. So I, I was always kind of like read the magazines and and was into watches and tried to wear like a nice watch. Um so anyway, like uh it, long story short, like I ended up you know selling the company and kind of getting out of that business and um w you know wanted to do my own thing. You know, we we would do um you know, we do our own, our own t-shirts, our own jerseys, our own things like that. Right. And right. that part was like the, that was the part that I really liked, like having to deal with manufacturers, like where, you know, you would maybe have an aesthetic or a, an idea and then they would just change what, what they were doing. Um, was always like kind of frustrating to me. Um, I really liked what we could control. Um, and so I, I just, I knew I wanted to do something that, that was, um, my my own or our own um i don't think so, anybody likes to be uh you know another instance i don't think anybody likes to be a musician and not be able to control what music they put out so i, yeah. I understand completely with that aspect for sure yeah no that's a good yeah it's a good analogy i mean so you just you know you you're trying to sort of create something with your own brand and then you know you're really you're really kind of you know beholden to to other people's ideas <laughs> which can be Definitely. tough so um you know, so anyway, we were um, my business partner at the time who used to work for me uh, at um, Athletes Lounge, which was my um, company. You know, we decided we were going to do something. He wanted to, to be a part of it and I wanted him to be a part of it. And, um, you know, we were looking at like EDC type of things and like wallets and like these, you know, kind of accessories. And I, I kept, you know, we have beers and coffee and, you know, discuss what we're going to do. And. You know, I'd be like, well, one day, we're, one day we'll do a watch. One day we'll do a watch and it's going to be awesome and all this stuff. And, you know, after hearing me for months, like one day, he's like, every time we have these conversations, like, yeah, we, you know, we struggle, you know, we struggle to find what we want, right? We, we struggle to yeah. find what we like. And then, you know, it always goes back to watches. Why don't we just do watches? And um, <laughs> it always gets back to watches. <laughs> so, right. Yeah. So it was like, so you know, it just like, okay, we're going to do it. We're not going to, you know, we're not going to wait. We're just going to try. So we, we really just kind of jumped in like pretty, um, pretty ignorant to <laughs> <laughs> a lot of things, but, but yeah, it was, and that, that's really kind of what kicked it off. So that's cool. I think you guys landed yeah. pretty well. So I'm uh, happy to, happy to have you here. Like we said, and I think you guys mm -hmm. are doing really well. So, yeah. I'm I'm curious to know, like, uh, you know, once you kind of made that that decision in your mind subconsciously, like, 
how did you how did you start like did you start sourcing like watchmakers or did you you know like did you start drawing like watches like what happened yeah there, you know yeah we started um it, it, it was kind of like you know we we're doing 10 things at once right like we um we were talking you know we we talked with um you know watchmakers and and people who you know had the technical know-how um you know we started working on design um trying to you know come up with like a concept um and then yeah as we were looking at you know how we would do it so danny who was my business partner is a very very smart guy just like um you know the the part that was like we were running into was like everything was like you know and I, it's a little different i mean in 2014 I, I know it doesn't it's not that long ago but it it, it was different landscape right for you know Definitely. smaller brands and micro brands it was like you really had to kind of dig a little bit to to find um you know and everything seemed to have really long lead times and you know for us big minimums and so you know danny was like he's like i think we could just make this i think we could do you know i think we could make the cases i think we can make the dials i think and um so it, it actually the, it was kind of funny because we were looking we we're we we're looking for spaces we're in the middle of like trying to you know conceptualize what the watch would look like or we didn't even have a name you know and um i was looking at a space that, that we were at for a while that was very like industrial very and danny was at a trade show this like trade show with machines he's like look there's this machine there's this you know uh, it was like a three axis, you know, since he was like, oh, cool. he's like, they're gonna, he's like, I can buy it. It's only gonna cost this much, but I got to leave with it. I got to like, I got to have, I got to buy it right <laughs> now. And I was like, okay, yeah, let's do it. Let's buy it. And then he's like, well, we need an address to ship to. And I'm like, literally like on the phone, we're at the location. And like, so I'm just like, Hey, can we have this sp spot? They're like, yeah. <laughs> I was like, all right, do it. Here's the address. And it was like, I mean, it was, it was ridiculous, you know, but we had, so we basically were like, we had a machine and we had a space and we were like, okay, we're like, we're doing this. Like, it's not a, it's not a concept anymore. And so that was really kind of how it, how it started. Um, and then we just started kind of going from there. So like the ultimate gamble. It sounds like <laughs> it, it was, it was, yeah, it was, it was pretty, it was pretty crazy. <laughs> it was but pretty how, crazy. But. What length of time did this all happen over? Was this something with, that was like a month long or did this take a long time to culminate? Gosh, you know, for me, like once I, I, I think once I get something in my head, like I want to move. Um, so I, I still, I hadn't, I wasn't out of, my other business at the time so i was still um still had that going on so it wasn't like it, it wasn't a total like uh, i wouldn't say it was like a side project but it was you know it was kind of on the side um for a few months and then you know once we once we had the space and the machine it, it really accelerated everything because Obviously, I mean, it took time. It took time to like, you know, Danny really was like a self-taught machinist. So it was like he was staying up, reading books. <laughs> We're buying, you know, <laughs> pieces of metal and learning how to, you know, that obviously like not to get too in the weeds, but like there's not really an industry for watches in the U.S., you know. So the right. machines aren't really made. The, the fixtures aren't really made for <laughs> holding watches or cutting cases or making dials or any of that stuff. So, um, you know, we weren't up and running right away, but like right away we we're, we're just like cutting, <laughs> cutting shapes <laughs> and like, yeah, it was, it was, uh, it was interesting. That's pretty cool. Awesome. Yeah. man. appreciate that information. Mm -hmm. Um, we'll move on to the next one. So on top of that, how, I know you said that, you know, you guys were talking about concepts and everything how did you guys think that you could differentiate differentiate yourself from the rest of the market like when when you were like man i had this idea this is fantastic what are we going to do that's going to make us different yeah um so i would say it's probably a little different now than it was when we started um I, you know i can't i definitely 
didn't and definitely don't <laughs> have it all figured out. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> I mean, if I, if I'm being totally honest, like when we started and it's a mistake, it's something I would tell people now, like if someone, you know, when people ask me about starting a watch brand, which happens occasionally, like my advice would not be to do what we did, you know, for us, like for us, because at the time we were manufacturing right. and we were trying to do it really, like we were just trying to make a watch. Like it was like, it was so rudimentary in the sense of like, like, you know, it was such a celebration. Like when we had the first like assembly that passed like water, you know, any kind of water tightness, right. Or like getting the crown, to fit, you know, and, uh, you know, dials were dials were crazy, like dials were so hard. And we, you know, we had to build a room that was like a clean room, and we had the negative space and the deionizer. And like, it, it was honestly, like, we didn't have that, like, and that was a mistake. Don't get me wrong, it was a mistake. But like, a lot of what fueled like the early business was like, how do we do this? Like, just how do we do it? And then I think, you know, to be honest, like some of some of like the design and some of like the storytelling and things, um, we just weren't, you know, we couldn't really make a watch like, oh, hey, we want this type of watch that's going to be this, um, you know, it was really just like what we could make, you know, like what, what we liked, but with with our capabilities. And so, you know, to jump ahead, like and we were we ended up we were doing stuff for other companies and and it, it was just kind of we were kind of chasing you know survival i think a lot <laughs> and uh we didn't really have this like this is how this is our differentiator you know other than like we're doing a lot ourselves which isn't really you know i mean yeah and That's so good. that makes sense yeah. And so I think, you know, I think we did, you know, we did make some watches that we're really proud of. And I think like the, the team of what they did was, was really, I think really impressive, especially with what they had to work with, you know, with our budget and our, the way they just, you know, Danny and Roger and Andrea and Kane, like they, they just, it was very, it was very cool. It was very like, um, but yeah, we didn't really have like, those things, you know? And so right. when the whole COVID thing happened, um, you know, that really, you know, that really obviously changed and everything. And, uh, you know, we did end up selling all the stuff. We ended up, you know, the, the team kind of went their separate ways for the most part. Um, and I just, I, we had this design, we had this dive watch from like 2017, I think, and we couldn't make it at the time. We just, you know, we couldn't do all that. We couldn't make the bracelet. We couldn't do that. And I was like, I'm going to do, I'm doing one run. I'm going to do one run of lot of products. I'm going to like get the photography I want, <laughs> the videos I want. This is the design that I've wanted for three years. Um, we're going to like, we're going to put it out there. And like, if it, if it drops with a thud, like I, I'm going to move on, you know, um, at least you went out screaming. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I was just like, because I, I, I did feel like that, like as, as impressive as what people were doing, like my part, <laughs> the stuff that I really liked, um, you know, I felt it, it was tough to do, right? Like your money, right. your time, your energy, it's all tied up into making, you know, manufacturing and, um, you know, to say, okay, we've got like, hundreds of these but it's like the color and the bezel and the shape and the you know like it was what i wanted and the packaging was what and anyway um when we released that um you know it was like to me you know it was a modern diver right it was it was extremely thin you know we we didn't have the ceramic insert we had you know we did uh the dlc and and the the steel you know, bezel, we, we had, right. um, you know, we had the inspiration, like the Northwest inspiration, the colors, and we, we had like a little bit of, we had a story behind it. Um, you know, uh, the wearability, the price, like, and so that, you know, that was a success for us. That was like, people really responded to it and, and it was, it went well. And so I think that, you know, and that kind of gave us the momentum. And so it, it really, you know, 
now it's like, you know, now it's really important that like, you know, the watch has a purpose. That's the right. watch has a story, mm-hmm. you know, and that like, everybody loves a story and a purpose. Right. <laughs> it, it, yeah, exactly. And that like, you know, we can, you know, the, the other thing is like, you know, we, you know, we have this, like this idea of like being, you know, your watch is this tool. It's this thing that supports you on these adventures. And, you know, and we built with, you know, with our warranty, with our service, with our, you know, support, and then with the design and the storytelling to like encourage it. And so, you know, it's, it's pretty cool. Like we get, you know, I, I feel like a lot of, uh, a lot of, you know, watches, cars, things that can be adversarial a little bit of like, well, wait, what'd you do? Why, how, why'd you mess that watch up? Well, that's going to cost you all this money. And there, you know, versus like, you know, our customers are like, oh, I took this on this rafting trip and I like did, you know, basically like I damaged the hell out of it. Right. And like, I need you to help me out. But it was like so awesome. And, and I think that's like, I think that's pretty unique in this space. Um, I think there's like, obviously like people, all brands want to have their customers interacting with them and, and taking their watches. But I think like, you know, we've tried to build like a system where they really understand like, oh, like I'm supposed to, I'm supposed to use this thing, <laughs> you know, I'm supposed to go have some fun. And then, uh, you know, they interact with us that way too. Like they want to share like this crazy epic grafting trip I did or this, you know, dive or something like that. And so, yeah. Yeah. I'm super curious. You said that you guys had a bunch of watches that you were super proud of. Which watch are you the proudest of? Uh, if you can answer. Um, and then, you know, walk us through, because when I think Vero, I think, you know, workhorse, like mm-hmm. everybody who I know who has one of your watches owns a workhorse. So, mm-hmm. yeah, um, is, is that is that the one for you or? Oh, man, <laughs> that's a tough that's a tough one. Um, the, the workhorse was um, the workhorse was the one that I think was like that one was like the yeah like no compromise like we wanted we actually we actually started designing i was working with uh, we worked with matt smith johnson on it um and he we had already basically we were already working on the open water but as we were working on the open water and as we were starting to get the content stuff i was like oh we need to like we need to go bigger and not not just (laughs) You know, the size of watches happened to be this big thing, but I was like, I want a hiking watch. Like I want not a field watch, not a, you know, or like I want a hiking watch. Like I want it to, you know, to be like, I already had the colors, you know, I was like, we want, you know, that OD green and the, you know, and the, the desert tans. And we want, I, like, I knew there was a, I knew it was a chronograph. I knew it, it you know, like our dive watch, like part of why we call it the open water, like I was, you know, I was an open water swimmer. And so part of the design was like most dive watches are meant to kind of strap over the, um, the wetsuit, um, for diving, but for swimming, you want it to go under the wetsuit, you know? So it was meant to be like, that was part of it. It was like, it was shaped to go under the wetsuit, not over. And so with the workhorse was like, it was opposite. Like you, you don't want your, you don't want your, jacket or your sweatshirt or anything to flip over it so you can't you know see it right away like so it had to be big and had to like stop the shirt from going over you know (laughs) um and so uh i knew it was velcro like i had all these things in my mind of like this is like you're gonna look at the watch and you're gonna know exactly what it's for like you're not gonna have there's not gonna be any part of you that doesn't understand and so um and then matt really kind of helped bring it to life like we i was really stuck (laughs) you know like i was like i know i know what it is you know but i don't i don't know what it how it all comes together um so definitely like i'm i'm definitely i mean i'm definitely proud of that one um i mean i i do love the new this new smoky um i i love like and for me like i'm a little like I love cases. Like I love watch cases. Um, the SW, yeah. which was honestly like our SW was not a huge success for us compared to like the rally or now, you know, more modern things like the workhorses or things like that. That's the but, quartz one, correct? Uh, well, the, it was a, it was an older version. It was not, gotcha. it's not something we currently, well, we have like one or two left, but 
that one was so hard to make and the idea that it curved to the wrist like that one was like it was a the case back was curved it, i i think i think it probably wasn't big enough like it not big like size but like there wasn't enough elements to make people appreciate those other details um but i'm proud of it but like you know like this smoky one like the the polished ring against the satin finish of the case um you know the little shovel on the second hand like the the details and the contrast finishing on the on the um the crown like i, I really like i wear this watch a lot <laughs> yeah i can tell <laughs> I really like I was gonna it. say yeah. that's it's a beautiful watch and i'm personally a fan of having cases that have the different you know your polish and your brush materials and things mm. like that and that was the first thing that i noticed as soon as i looked at that watch um, I was like, man, like they actually paid attention to these little details that just, it gives it this little flair. And I, I love that to it. Yeah. I think, I, I think that that's one of the things is like, you know, I, I think when you, like for me, like when I started, when we started the brand, um, you know, I definitely had like, um, a taste for like more scaled down design, like simpler, like, you know what I mean? Like I, right. I, I didn't like but I think as you get into it more and as you <laughs> like you, you want you want to start adding more, you know, you want to start doing more little touches and more things. And so it's always like a, a bit of a challenge, right? Of like you, you don't want it to look busy, you know. There's watches where That's you're right. just like, there's just too much, like just chill. Um <laughs> but at the same time to be legible, but like <laughs> not just so simple, I guess. <laughs> right. And so like like for me, like I I personally like I personally love things that you like you notice more later. Like I, I love like not just in not just in watches, but like I love things that like you didn't notice that detail and you had it for a few months and then you're like, you know, like the shoe has like some little inscription, you know what I mean? Or right. like and so I think like, I think part of why I really like this watch is yeah, like there's these little things that you'll miss at first, like overall, I think it's aesthetically pleasing, but then, which is nice. Like you want to, when you first see it, you want to enjoy it. You want to be like, yeah, this is cool. I like this. But then like those little details um, for me, I think are really nice. Like I, I personally like, you know, That's yeah, definitely the way like it, what sets it apart, like o over, you know, from, from the little boys to the big boys is these things that, you know, you, you pick and choose that they, they kind of hold their own over time. Um, yeah. And that's why I was saying it's just these little details that, you know, the average person, you, you look at it, you're like, oh, that's cool. It's a watch. It's nice looking. But these little, little things that just set it differently. That's what keeps me interested in coming back to a watch. Um, I personally, yeah, I come from a photography background, so I'm all about the little details and intricacies. Um, and I personally, I, I love getting lost in details like that. So, mm -hmm. yeah, um, that's, that's what keeps people buying watches. You know, they, they, yeah. they fall, they, they use it. And so the practicality is there and then it complements their life. But then what really sets you above and pushes your, your watches above the next brand is those small details, you know, the, the way the crown works and the way the bezel mm -hmm. sounds. And I know it's all these little silly things in my opinion, but that's what really people respond well to. And they're like, I love this watch for X, Y, Z purposes. And yeah, you know, yeah, totally. I, I agree. And, and I think I, I it kind of goes back to what we were saying before. Like that's, what's been nice about kind of maybe the new iteration is like, we've been able to do like, um, on the workhorse, like to go back to the workhorse, like, um, you know, the shape of the dial, you know, it, it basically comes up to like this plateau in the middle and it has this, you know, little shape. And then on, on the back country, there's these rivets for the, you know, for where like the, the second markers would be. And I mean, obviously some people are like, it's, you know, it's, it's hard to pick up on those things. It's not, but like, for me, like, that's a plus, right? Like the, like I've had customers who've been like, dude, I bought the watch and I've had it. And I just realized that the dial is like shaped different, you know, or I just, re <laughs> I just noticed those rivets and it like, looks like a, t you know, and, and like, again, like I said, we, you know, a, a complaint could be like, wait, watch it. You know, you, I want to see every little part of it, but like, yeah, for me, it's, that's a that's a feature that's not a you know it's not a mistake and so um 
you know, I think like, yeah, like those things are, those things are fun. Like they're fun in in making the watch. And then I think, yeah, they're fun as a experience, you know, like if I'm sick of wearing a watch, if I'm bored with our own watch, like that's not, that's not good. Right. <laughs> so, <laughs> you prob you probably, you probably never admit it either. I would, no, I would, I would, I, I, would, I was like, no, I mean, there's, there's no, like, I, I'm, I, I've gotten better at it, but like, uh, like Andrea, so she was, Andrea was with us from the start or, you know, pretty early on. And then she's really kind of become like, she, she manages the website. She does manages a lot of our creative. She's, she's awesome. Um, but like, she used to be like, when we would do like events, she'd be like, Chris, you need to just stay away because people come up and they say something nice about your watch and you jump to like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But like the, the next thing is like, you know, like, cause I'm, I'm like, I'm sick of it by the time, you know, it, it's like, it's You're your biggest customer, as right? Well. Yeah. So no, I'm, I, I've gotten better. I've like learned to be like, not be like, well, wait, hold on. Some better is coming. But like, no, I'm, I'm, I'm always like, cause you know, it's like, you've been sitting with something for a year, you know, or six months and it's like all you, you know what I mean? You just want to make it better. Like you're just like, what's, what's the other, what's the next thing or so. Yeah. Um, it's a creative process that we all face, you know, it's like you're your own worst critic, like Justin said, but you get so attached to it and you get so involved in the design process. And then by the time it comes to market, you're like, yeah, it's a piece of shit. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. Yeah. So it's, yeah. I, yeah. I it's, think I originally, Yep, well, I was just gonna, I was just gonna say I think I originally came into contact with your brand at uh, at Wind Up mm -hmm. um, San San Fran, mm -hmm. um, and I was immediately attracted to the uniqueness of the design. I mean, clearly everybody was there for a different purpose, but your right. watches clearly had that like like rugged um, design element where like you know everybody's watches there felt like they were you know, machined really nice and they were mm -hmm. you know designed yeah. to complement you in different lifestyles, but your watch was clearly designed to be just trashed, mm -hmm. you know? Right. Yeah. Um, and I, I mean, there's not too many brands out there that clearly say, Hey, like trash our watch. Like we love it. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's just how like, yeah, it just always seems a shame to me. Like, you know, there's so much out there with like, Oh, you know, a guy on a motorcycle and jumping in this helicopter and going on this thing. And you're like, but like, you come back to the, you come, I, I wouldn't say anything like any, you know, but you come back and you say, Hey, but I smashed my crystal on a boulder in this, you know, and they're like, well, that's dumb. Why would you do that? Like, that's going to cost, <laughs> you know, all this money or like, yeah, well, you, you know, you're not supposed to take it that deep, you know, or like you didn't, and it's like, it just, you know, it, it doesn't, yeah, it doesn't feel like authentic, you know? And so like, that was really like the whole like warranty thing. Like that was, it, it, it actually came organic. Like it wasn't, it wasn't this like really strategic plan of like, we're going to have the best warranty in the industry. And that it was like, you know, people would come back and they'd be like, they're having a problem, you know, or, you know, the watch, like there's stuff happens, you know, it's like a car. Um, it's like, and we're like, yeah. And we're like, oh, hey, like, yeah, we, you know, we'll, we'll take care of you. And we, we got it. And then, you know, we had pretty much like a standard two year warranty. Um, and we just weren't honoring it. You know, I was like, cool, like you didn't put it in a in a you didn't put it in a um, a drawer or sell it like you actually want to wear the watch like like what you know, how, how much work is it really for us to help you? You know, what's what's that? What's that? cost you know really versus like you just being like yeah i had one a couple of years ago like it you know what i mean it made people and so yeah then it starts to be a thing like where like people will reach out and they'll be like hey look i'm i'm leaving for a trip like you're the guys that like <laughs> i can like really like I, it's really okay and i'm like yeah it's it's fine so they'll like it's like we've seen like a lot of people who are like maybe like more high-end customers like people who have a lot of really expensive watches or like it's it especially like the open water like it, it fits of it, it fits that look of that that bracelet that stainless steel diver but like their other one is like it's gonna be such a hassle if something happens and versus like 
well, I'm just gonna like, it's just like peace of mind, you know? And so, um, but yeah, I mean, it was really just a matter of like, we were just not turning anyone away and not really like, you know, making people pay. And we we're like, yeah, like, this is a good thing. Like they're, they're just, they feel more comfortable, you know, they, they feel yeah. like, and, and, and then they're loyal, you know, then they, they, they'll take a chance on the next one because they're like, it's cool. Like I'm, you know, definitely That's, um... not worried about it. What's the most trashed? I know so your warranty is 10 years, any damage. So what's the most trashed watch that came in? <laughs> that the I, I'm I'm laughing because he's fine. He's okay. But um motorcycle crash. Um a guy crashed his motorcycle. Um I think he broke I think he broke his arm, whatever. Ooh. But he went it was one of our SWs and he went straight on to the pavement. I mean, he just like, I think we might still have pictures somewhere, but it was just, you know, I mean, it was crushed. Like it was, it was like the crystal smashed, the dial was pushed through. I don't think there were hand, you know what I mean? Like it was just like, I mean, he took an impact at, at a pretty high speed. And, and like I said, I mean, he, he was, he's fine. He was okay. Um, but he That's came good. back and, and yeah. So, you know, so I can kind of, <laughs> it's all, you know, but. But he came back and he was like, he was like, look, this is not covered. Like, he's like, I know this is not covered. You know, he's like, but I love it. And, you know, if I don't have to just buy a new one, if I could just pay, you know, and we were like, okay, like, it's just, you know, that, and I think that honestly, like, made us like, they were like, oh, this could be like our thing. Like, we could, if we could service this watch, you know, and obviously, I mean, he, he basically got a new watch, you know, it's not like you could go and fix that watch, you know, yeah. um, but, you know, but we were like, well, you can't just say it was stolen. You know, that's like maybe the one you can't just not have the watch, you know, but if you can return it to us in any condition. And so, um, yeah, we've seen, I mean, we've had like, you know, a lot of people don't trash their watch, you know, a lot of people it's minor things. Right. Um, right. but yeah, I mean, we've, you know, we've had a few, broken sapphires you know we've had like some pretty nasty gashes you know like um you know we try to make the watches built pretty solid so they're not just like falling apart you know but um but yeah the the motorcycle crashed because he just landed right on it and he just i mean it, it it was you know it was like it was comical how destroyed it was like it was it just broke a, his fall <laughs> yeah it, no he did i mean he landed on it and so um yeah that one was pretty that one was pretty epic Glad to hear that he's okay though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It yeah. could have been much worse for sure. My uh my grandfather had gotten in a motorcycle accident probably about two years ago. Um, you know, he's a little older, but he's yeah. still hasn't really recovered from it. So could have been worse, yeah. but glad he's yeah, all right. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So that's why it's a fun story because he was fine. <laughs> yeah, I feel like you you get that with warranties a lot of times too, especially if you guys cover with 10 years, like Blake was mentioning. I mean, that that is a that is a huge window of time um, mm -hmm. that you could honestly like get to hear some really cool stuff from people. Um, and I would say that's probably one of the driving things that, um, you know, helps you harness your relationship with your customers. Um, and I don't I don't know if you think that or, or, or not, but uh, I feel like that would help me build trust with you guys and to kind of maintain that trust um, over time, because I know that you guys are backing anything that I put my watch through. Yeah, I think that's it. I mean, I think that's, that's kind of the whole thing, right? Like, it's like a warranty. It's a pretty boring concept. Like, it's not like it. It's not like, oh, our watch does this, you know, or our watch is, you know, the case glows in the dark. Like, it's, it's a warranty. It's kind of boring, you know, and so like, to like, bring it into the lifestyle aspect and like into the storytelling, I think has been yeah, it's been a like people can kind of have fun with it. Yeah. And it becomes this like, um, you know, especially early, like people were very like, you know, because people will come back, right? And they'll something will happen and they'll be like, I don't know what's wrong with this watch. It's not working. And you're like, okay, cool. Like, we'll, we'll take care of it. And they're like, really? You don't need to. And I was like, yeah, well, we got you. And he's like, well, I might have dropped it on the concrete when I, you know, like <laughs> you're like, how it comes out, like, right? And because um, they were like, oh, like, but like, it's exactly what you're saying. Like, they're like, okay, they feel more comfortable. Like, you're, oh, you like, 
and so now I think, yeah, more and more people just, they already know it. So they're just like, they, yeah, they don't care. Like, it's like, it's a, and it doesn't happen. Like, it's not like, it's not like a hundred watches are coming back. Just trash like that. That would be, that would be tough. You know, I think for the most part, people don't, you know, they don't want to have to send it in for service. That's right. Um, but yeah, but when it happens, yeah, it's more, it's a more conversational, like, Oh, Hey, like this, this happened, you know? Cause a lot of times like something did happen. Like a lot of times it is your fault. You know what I mean? Like as the watch wearer, like a lot of times you are at fault, you know? And so to say like, to just kind of, yeah, have that like relief of like, Oh, I can just like, I can laugh about it. I can tell you guys like, Oh yeah, I was, I was being whatever. Like, yeah, it is. It's a, it's a more like conversational, like more enjoyable experience, you know? Definitely so. I don't, and I don't care how long a warranty is personally, I will always baby my watches. So. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you'll, you'll never see me returning mine, but <laughs> yeah, it's, and that's, that's the thing too, right? Like, I, I mean, the, the watches I have, like I, and I, I do like, I intentionally will take mine, you know, make them as whatever as I can, but like they, they, for the most part, they're pretty sturdy, you know, they're pretty like, you know, so I'm, I'm curious. Um, so obviously as you stepped up your warranty and you went from two years to 10 years, how has that influenced like your choice in materials? Because from the world, the world that I come from, everybody is trying to make some type of proprietary material, like hybrids that are lighter, stronger, mm -hmm. yada, yada. Like how, how has that, you know, that, that, that use case of your watches influenced your choice and in, in the materials? Yeah. I mean, yeah, I think obviously like, yeah, we don't want anything. Like we've had those conversations with, um, you know, doing the Cerakote to the case, you know, um, we had, we had had some experience with it, uh, from the old, we actually used to use that on our dial. Um, and, um, we, you know, there were definitely issues, right? Like you're gonna, you know, with coding, with, um, you know, applications with, with things like that. Like, yeah, you want to make sure that it's, it's pretty rock solid. Um, so yeah, so we'll definitely like, you know, we're definitely going to lean more towards the longer lasting, um, versus things that can, you know, like a, maybe a softer, you know, softer metal or like a, yeah, some new application, you know, there's some, you know, there's some other things we could have done that, that just felt like, you know, you don't want to have, you don't want to get hundreds of watches back, you know, because you, whatever, you did the, the wrong material. So like, yeah, I mean, it, it's, we're aware of it for sure. Like we're always going to, going to try to like think through, like, is this something that's going to actually last? Um, you know, but, but I don't know that like, if I really had this epic <laughs> idea for some, you know, material, like it would be hard for me not to do it. So, um, I would, you know, I, I don't know that there's like, you know, I don't know that I would say like anything's off limits. Um, but yeah, but I think like, you know, to, to a certain extent, like, yeah, we want it to be pretty reliable. Like we don't, we're not trying to like, yeah, we're not trying to like impress you off of like, nano this that you know like it's like it's design and it's quality and it's you know hopefully like a unique experience but not yeah that that's not yeah we're not we're not driven by like what's this new futuristic material that no one's touched before it's just that's just not our lane you know yeah for sure so. and i wanted to ask you kind of while we're on that subject as well about the materials um kind of reaching back into the warranty stuff as well uh you know just i guess tell the audience how do you guys generally handle whenever people do damage their watches and you have um you know issues with uh the materials do you replace them fully do you try and fix them how does that work yeah it depends on it depends on the situation right like um if it's uh you know like you know, if, it, if it's, if it's something, you know, obviously like if it's just something with timing and something that can be fixed, like our watchmaker just, you know, he just opens up, he fixes it, you know, every now and then those, those things need to be replaced. Um, and we have, you know, we have a, you know, we have, um, extra parts, right. Extra, extra supplies. Um, 
uh, extra cases, extra dials, extra hands, all those things. Um, you know, if we need to replace or replace it, uh, sometimes like with the, with the stainless steel, um, you know, we do like the, the blast finish and we still have like a blast cabinet and we still have polishing and graining supplies and stuff. So we can actually, we can actually do the refinishing on a, on a steel case. Um, nice. if it's a Cerakote and there's a scratch, like for that, for those, for the, uh, we pretty much have to replace it. Um, but yeah, we, you know, it just, it just depends, depends on the situation, you know, obviously crack crystals, you just, you know, you got to replace the crystal, um, uh, you know, straps, things like that. Um, yeah, I mean, we, we just, you know, we have, we have a, a collection of, of extra parts and, you know, I think like, you know, there, there could probably be a time where there could probably be a time where like, we could be like, there could be some weird thing, right? Like, you know, we're short. Of, of this or that but like typically with the customers like you know we can we can just work through that whether it's like a loner or something if it's going to be a longer lead time than normal you know we try to get it back pretty quick too that's the other part like we don't you know we try to not we try to be pretty efficient with our warranty um you know it's not like oh yeah it's 10 years but you got to wait six months you know that's <laughs> that's you know we we try to Very get tiny. it back as soon as possible but but if there is a longer delay, we'll typically reach out to them and just try to be like, hey, look, you know, and that that's pretty rare because we try to, you know, for the most part, we try to make it easy. But, you know, it, it, yeah, over the course of 10 years. And so we've and we started to think about it, too, like, hey, look, if we ever have this issue or we ever, you know, this thing ever happens that could that could mess up, you know, that situation, like, you know, what do we have? And so we, we've been working on nothing that's really come up yet, but just, you know, to think ahead, right? Like to say like, okay, how, you know, and so we have, I think we have some things that, um, that we'll have in place over the next year or so that like, if there were some sort of issue there, like we would have a solution, we'd have a way to, to, to manage that for customers. So. Moving forward, my, um, I told my friend you were coming on the podcast and he was, begging me to ask you about Smokey the Bear and licensing mm -hmm. and all this, you know, I'm sure the non-fun stuff that nobody really talks about, but, um, you know, what was that like? Like, I'm, I'm assuming that you probably spent months and months and months trying to get that licensing and tell us how it yeah. came to be, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so it started if, um, so, someone, <laughs> Someone reached out on our website um, a while back, and uh, we had done the Ridge Trail, which was that green, that mint green tile. I remember that water. Love that tile. Yeah, and this guy had just sent a message. He was like, you know, he's like that that green, like he's like, oh, I know, like it was the bridge. He's like, but that green looks just like those the Forest Service green trucks that we used to drive. I was a retired Forest Service employee, you know, for. And he's like, you know, there's a lot of us out there. And he's like, I, they would recognize that in a heartbeat, you know? And I was like, dang, wait, like, I don't, I didn't even really recognize it. Like I didn't make the connection. And then I started looking, I was like, oh man, that, you know, like that's pretty neat. And then, you know, with us, with outdoors, like, I was like, man, the forest service, like that would be a really cool, like, that'd be a really cool connection, you know, like what's, what's available. And so there's not really like a forest service licensing like website or agency. And so I, I found like the guy in DC. Right. And <laughs> was like, he, at first he thought I wanted a contract, which would have been sweet too. That would have been nice. But, <laughs> uh, you know, he thought I wanted to, like a government contract and he was like, I'm, you know, this is not, you know, and I said, no, like I want to license like the forest service, you know, I want to like, do some watches that are inspired by it and I want to, you know, and so, so he's like, Oh, okay. So we, we kind of went back and forth and, um, ended up getting that license, like getting a, a, an agreement, you know, like a multi-year agreement for that. And, um, and so, so then I'm like, okay, cool. Like, and we already kind of had an idea of like how we would use the forest service and what, what we would do there. And so we were talking, um, I was actually talking to Matt and I was telling him about it. And, and then he's like, oh man, yeah, we could do like Smokey the Bear. And you know, like that would be, that'd be so much fun. 
And then, so I started to look and I was like, oh wait, like Smokey the Bear is separate. Smokey the Bear is not included. Like it's owned by the Forest Service, but it's not managed by the Forest Service. And so yeah. then I was like, how do we get a Smokey the Bear, <laughs> you know? And so um, to, to be honest, so they have a, like a company, right? That license it. And um, yeah, it was my first foray into licensing. Um, I kind of went down a rabbit hole. I learned a lot. Um, uh, but it, it really wasn't too bad because we had a deal with the Forest Service in place already. So it was kind of like, you know, I think a lot of some of that legwork was already done. Um, and so, yeah, so we got um, we got Smokey and. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it was so I will say we, we did we almost did another we almost had another licensing with this big company and and it it didn't happen it, it like fell through at the last minute I'm, I'm happy it did to be on i know people say that but like i really am because i think it would have overwhelmed us uh it would have been too much in one year um but that was that was a pain that was the like months and months and back and forth and creating presentations and like it it was it was a lot um the smoky was actually pretty pretty mild so it can be a nightmare. <laughs> um, I did go through the process, but um, but for Smokey, like it, it was, it was relatively straightforward. I think like we had, you know, we had a nice product. We've been in business, you know. We we have we didn't have a Smokey watch or, or a licensed watch, but we have watches in the market, and we have revenue, and we have, you know what I mean. Like we're not just coming yeah. up with like, hey, we want to start a you know a pen company for. Smokey the Bear, like it was like, we're already making watches. We're gonna, you know, so yeah. So it was, it wasn't too bad. <laughs> Sometimes a, a smaller door closes, so a bigger door can open as well. So yeah, uh, I'm glad that you guys didn't take on too much to you know Im implode on yourselves or anything like that. Yeah, yeah, we definitely like we had, and that was that. This year was a little crazy because we we hit. You know, you have to obviously like you can't you can't bring a watch to life in you know, three months or six months. Um, and so, you know, so you're, you're already forecasting and planning for, you know, a year. And then all of a sudden, like we get these partnerships and then we're like, wait, hold on. Like, you know, how does this all work together? And so, R and D never stops. It has to keep going. So right. Exactly. Exactly. So like, um, it, yeah, it's been, it's been interesting. So, but yeah, it, it was, you know, once we got it, you know, and then the, I think the other part that was funny was like, okay, it's like, you know, I was like, okay, yeah, like we, okay, I got to I got to get Smokey, right? We have the four stars, we got to get Smokey because Smokey is like Smokey Bear. And, an icon. <laughs> right, exactly. And then we get it. And then it was like that realization of like, oh crap, like now we have to make a Smokey watch and how is it not lame? Like, and how is it not like... <laughs> just generic like you know what i mean like it was like it, it kind of switched over to like we already knew kind of what the forest service will, and obviously those have been pushed a little farther just because of smoky but like we already kind of knew what we were doing there like it was kind of like oh yeah we know we already had the idea we were like oh crap like <laughs> now we gotta now we gotta do this and like i think the first like the first rounds that we went through were just we're just off. Like they were, we were trying to fit Smokey into what we were doing. And that was just a big, it was just a big miss. And so we kind of shifted our thought process and anyway, I'm, you know, obviously we're happy with how it, it came together, but yeah. Next. How, how did you guys, um, how did y'all come across the two, the two different models, the 64 and the 44 or, or whose idea was that? Yeah. So, um, so like working like me and Matt, basically like Matt's, uh, he's a trained designer, you know, and he's really, really good. Um, and, and like I said, I, he, he, when we first, when we first talked, right. When we first talked about it, like I said, it kind of came together as like, um, as, as Vera watches with Smokey and it was, like to me, it just didn't, it just didn't click, you know? And so like, you know, I kind of was like, okay, like 
it is 1944. Like we're this little company, you know, we're this watch company that's been contracted to make a watch for Smokey. Like he's a real person. <laughs> he, <laughs> he needs to have a watch. And, and honestly, like that was enough, I think for Matt to be like, Oh, sh like that's what we're doing. And though, so then it was like, the design was like, then everything we started pulling was like, you know, cause we don't typically go, like, we're not a typically like overly vintage brand. Like we use more modern fonts, we use more modern sure. shapes. And so it was like, no, we like, if we're going to ever be a more vintage, like it's now is the time. Right. And, um, and then I, I was kind of like, I was kind of, it, we have, we, we moved through and it's funny because I ended up liking the one with him on the dial. The 44. More, yeah. Yeah. And, and that's been the most popular, but I was the one that was like, we need to have one without him on the dial. Like, uh, I was like pretty adamant about that because my, my thought process was like, you know, if you, if you have just like a great field watch, like a great field watch. And then like we were talking about earlier with subtle hints to what it's about. Um, and I think we still were able to do it with the 44 with him on because it, he isn't just this like overwhelming yeah. presence, but that was my concern was it was just going to look like a kid's watch, you know? Right. You, you still want for it to have that novelty, but not be this cartoonish. Yeah. And be a little more so reserved. Right. And so like, that was one of the things from the start, like that was one of the things that, that was very, was like very important to me from the start was like, the packaging is going to be fun. It's going to be nostalgia. It's going to be like kid at Christmas, but the watch has got to be wearable because you don't want it to be like it to me. I didn't want it to be like a little thing that you had and you're like, Oh yeah, that was, you know, I wear it once a, once a year when I go to the park, you know what I mean? Like we want it right. to be very, like, I want it to be a, a daily. And like that, that's one of the things I personally like is like, you know, I've had, I've had people, you know, say like, Oh, I like your watch. And like, which is cool. Right. That's great. But like not one person knew it was a Smokey the Bear watch. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like they were just, they just liked the Papaka or the, you know, they just, and so I was like, that was really important. And so I wanted to have something that didn't have him on the dial. Um, right. To say, I noticed like, you guys had put it on the, on the case back on that. Version. Yeah. Yeah, he yeah, he's more pronounced on the case back and the case back on the 44 is the more like, you know, poster uh, warning thing. And so, you know, we wanted them and then, you know, um, you know, Matt did a great job of like, you know, just finding like air specific fonts and styling so that we could, you know, we could keep it around these like key times for Smokey and, you know, relevant to like kind of how we think of Smokey. Um, so that the watch could could feel different um but familiar you know not just like this uh, this one's like totally this way and this one's totally that way like they they can complement each other and um so yeah it was it was definitely like it was definitely important that at least one kind of showed like well you could still support it and it really just like truly be like a field watch you know and so Cause we had those conversations, like, you know, it was like, Matt, you know, we were talking like, would, would Smokey wear a watch with his face on it, you know? <laughs> and we we're like, well, you know, he might, because he's got these other things that have, you know, and, but if he didn't, it would be, you know, like, so <laughs> like, we were, we were really like trying to like figure out like, you know, and so we like, so Matt and Matt did that, which was awesome. Like we had that, we were heavily leaning on the, on the packaging that has him with his friends and the Jeep going up the mountainside. Like yep. that, that was our, like, this is our smoky. Like this oh, more than anything is our smoky. This is who he is. Right. It was like, he's got the jeans. He's got the show in the pickaxe. He's got the Jeep, you know, he's like, got the hat. Like, it was like, that was the era. That was the guy. And so like, you know, not putting the watch on him was like very, funny because it was like it was like like that that was kind of for me like that was like when he did that like that actually made me even more comfortable because it was like like people are like you know it's like the whole berenstein berenstein Bear, like it was like yep. does he wear a watch 
Like maybe he does wear like because the watch looks appropriate on him, you know, like that field watch with the canvas strap and uh, you know, <laughs> and the the size and like you know, like it was like it it still fit the outfit, and so like it was like yeah, like he would totally wear a watch like this. Like it would, it doesn't look, it didn't look to me, it didn't look out of place. Like and so that was, it was small, but it was like important. It was like seeing him wearing the watch, <laughs> like. You know what I mean? Like it, it made it fit like, yeah, like, yeah, he would wear a watch just like this. Like this would be the watch he would wear. And so anyway, I can't that see it now. That, that's the only way that I imagine Smokey the Bear now. Yeah. Is with the watch. <laughs> yeah, he should be right. He should. He's like, so anyway, it was, <laughs> but yeah, we've had, we've, I've had people that have asked me like, was he, was he always wearing a watch? Did you guys put that on there? I'm like, oh. <laughs> man, <laughs> proper Mandela effect in place right there. Yeah, right. exactly. So, yeah. That's awesome. Are there are there any like um like technical innovations that you guys are working on? Like is there any kind of I mean obviously you guys are kind of pushing the industry in, in a different direction, but um are you guys working on, on anything proprietary, anything in, innovative? Like you know, what what does that look like in the roadmap for you guys? Yeah. Um you could you so, could just say yeah and be done with it you know i don't want to no no this yeah vibe. it's um let's see um it, it's a good question because yes um i you know if you're into watches you can't help but be intrigued by doing something different and doing something big um and so and obviously like if you've got ideas for thousand dollar watches you've got ideas for ten thousand dollar watches and twenty thousand dollar you know um i think that would be i think i think anyone would you know what i mean anyone that's in this world you know um would have opinions and thoughts there um and it's a it's a part of this niche you know um i would say i would say that you know there's different ways to approach that. There's different ways to approach um, those kind of things, you know? Um, like, you know, do do people, you know, people, the, the <laughs> sorry, I'm like stuttering here, but the <laughs> people fine. like boxes, you know, they like to know what they're getting from a certain company, right? And like, so like for me, like, I love like rose gold watches, for example, like a rose gold, like, you know, whatever, like just stunning, you know, you know, if we made a rose gold watch, you know, dress watch, people are like, what? Wait, you got a $15,000 bureau in rose gold. Like, it's <laughs> not, you know what I mean? Like, I'm not, I'm not doing that. Um, and so, and, and we're not doing a rose gold. I can tell you that's not in it, but it just, that's as a, as a, you it heard is, it is, it's beautiful, man. I, I mean, look, if you if you guys want to put a deposit, we'll we'll, we'll make a run of rose gold smokies. And uh, but 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 anyway, but like from the more like technical, innovative side, um, how we present it is going to be um, is going to really be the, the key there. Um, and so I, I'll say we are working on something that, that I think is pretty unique um, and pretty special. Um, I don't know exactly how long it's going to take. <laughs> it's it's in the works. It's not like just a thought. It's past that. It's um, and how it's how it's presented and how it's put out there is still in the works. Um, so that's uh, it's not a great answer, but that's that's the. Best I mean, you I gave us something, man. Like, yeah, <laughs> stay tuned. Stay yeah, tuned. yeah. It's it's it won't be it won't be. I, I can say this, it won't be like an advanced, like a super advanced version of what we're already doing. It would be its own thing. It would be like its own. Oh, there's my dog. Um. <laughs> you're you're going to have to save a big reveal for the podcast. So every episode that we've done of a podcast, all of our guests have had some big reveal. Okay. So start thinking about it now. All right. Next time. Yeah. Yeah. Next time I'll next time I'll have it. But uh yeah, it's 
it, it is fun. I mean, it, it, it's fun to, to think like that, right? It's fun to think about what's not out there. Um, but yeah, it has to do be presented guys, in the right way. Do you guys have like, uh, like any future innovations or anything that's kind of in the pocket that you are maybe unveiling to the market soon? Um, we have, I mean, we do have new, we do have new products. Like we do have like new, you know, like unreleased things. And we, um, you know, we have, uh, you know, we have new versions of, of existing watches and we have, um, you know, some version twos of things. Um, you know, it, like I said, it doesn't, it doesn't make a ton of sense for us to, um, you know, to, to use things that are too, um, like that are too specific for, for, for Vero, sure. right. For Vero as, as it exists, you know, we do try to keep like things that you, you could access, like things that you could like, you know, if, if you didn't send it back to us, you know, your watchmaker could help you out, you know? Um, and, you know, and so we always try to push the, push the boundaries of like improving the timing in house and, um, you know, playing with different cases, playing with different designs. Um, yeah. but you know, I don't, you know, we're not going to be doing like, you know, with, with Vero, with this, with what you see, like, you know, it's improvements to the bracelet, you know, it's improvements to the buckle. It's, yeah. you know, better loom, like it, and, and it's, you know, hopefully compelling design with, you know, with color, with shapes, with, you know, things like that, uh, things that, that kind of enhance the user experience, but maybe aren't like, you know, groundbreaking technology. Right. And there's, <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with that, you know, and yeah. kind of what, what pushes me into that, asking that question is because, um, going back to the workhorse, uh, you guys mm -hmm. watch, it's a very unique watch in my terms of innovation. I think that that's innovational because I've never really seen anything like it. Um, yeah, yeah, sure. Maybe it's not pushing a 2000 meter water resistance or something like that. However, it's unique and innovative in its own right. Um, and that's kind of what led me to that question, because I feel like you guys, you do kind of have your own um, kind of pathways and things that you're taking with a lot of your designs that make them unique. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I love that about it, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. From, from that perspective, I think absolutely. Like we're, we're definitely trying to, um, we have, we have some like with the workhorse being a success, um, you know, we want to, we want to expand that line, um, for sure. We, we definitely want to expand the line as far as like, um, not just, not just different colors, right. But different, different sizes, different shapes, different uh, functions. So that, that will definitely, like, that's definitely something that's in the queue is like expanding the workhorse line, expanding the open wire line. Um, you know, yeah, those, those things are, are definitely like, so from that, yeah, from that, you know, and, and change, you know, change into the, the dynamic a bit as far as like, yeah, what, what, what movement might be in it or what, you know, what size it might be, things like that. So. What um, what has been the most challenging aspect of like creating watches that stand out in the marketplace? So, my personal experience is I've sold luxury brands for over thirty luxury brands, some of those iconic watches in the world. Yeah, I've sold them. Um, and something that, for example, Gerald Genta, I mean, prob you know, he talked about was was unique design elements, and and if you look at you know, examples like the Panerai Luminor case or, you know, the Royal Low bracelet and the integration. Mm -hmm. um, but for you as a brand, it, it's crazy to me because when I was at Windup, I saw a lot of watch brands and they weren't really pushing innovation in a way. But, you know, every watch looked like the other watch. Yeah. And, you know, you're in a unique position because you're truly creating that unique DNA where people look at the look at the watch and know it's a Vero watch, you know, so you're right. on that path. So something that immediately 
spark to my mind is, is is how challenging is that for you like to make a watch that truly stands out in the marketplace you know what, yeah. what are the aspects you consider right yeah yeah it's tough man it, you're, you're right because i i agree like you you the the balance is like and, and i think we've probably seen it um <laughs> You know, in, you know, maybe even in like, maybe if we, even if we leave watches, you know, we've seen it in other products, but like, you know, like shoes or something, it's like, you know, how is it familiar, but different, you know, because, you know, I can just, I mean, we could all like, we could sit here right now for 20 minutes. We can make, well, the watch is now a triangle and it's a pyramid and there's a, like, you could do something stupid, I don't, I'm sorry, but like, you know, you could do something just for the sake of doing something different. And there's nothing, there's nothing special about that. Um, and I think that's probably what you're trying to get at is like, how does it, how does it feel familiar? How do you, how is it wearable? How is it like something that you could throw on your wrist and feel comfortable at, you know, a brewery with your friends or doing something, but you also are like, yeah, this is different. This isn't what, like, there's not, it's not what everyone else does. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's definitely a balance, right? It's definitely a balance of like, you know, I, I think, and I, I think for us, you know, it's like, we're always like, especially now, like we're always trying to figure out like, what's like, yeah, is it different enough? Is it too, is it too different? Is it too familiar? Um, and, and that balance is a sweet spot, right? Like the balance is like when, when people, that's what people respond to, I think, at least from us, you know? Um, because because we talked about it we're like you know there's some brands that do like a lot of brands that do these basically like faithful restorations of existing pieces right that's definitely very popular um and for me like i looked at it, i'm like are we gonna do that better than them like that some of them i mean they're great man they're they're digging through the history books and they're you know they're oh, i found that you know this particular shade so it's it's not um that's that's um that's its own level of like creativity and thought and thoughtfulness. Um, but like, you know, we're, we probably can't stand out in that range, right? We can't stand out in that era. Like there's other brands doing that better. Um, you know, and then there's other brands that like, you know, there's always gonna be someone cheaper, like someone, someone put in the comments of one of our posts, like, you know, like a, a spec monster instead of a strap monster. Like he's like, look, you could always find a spec monster that you could get something with some feature for less, but like, you know, are you getting the design? Are you getting the feel? Are you getting the, like, are you getting that joy of putting it on and it feeling like a special watch to you versus just like, well, nope, this one had this movement with this thing and it costs this much. So like, we can never really be the cheapest. I'm like, you know, like our margins, like the, the idea that we've just got these insane margins and we're just like, you know, it's like and everyone in the watch industry, like, no, <laughs> you know, um, <laughs> But it's like, yeah, I mean, that that's the balance, right? It's because you, you, you can't do what everyone else has done because like, if, if our, if we make a watch just as good as a Rolex, like exactly as good as a Rolex and exactly like a Rolex, like it's not as good as a Rolex cause they've been around for longer and they did it first. You know, if I'm going to recreate something that has already been done, I'm going to faithfully recreate it. There's just other people doing that better. And if it's just how possibly cheap can I make the most well spec watch? Other people just they they've got you know they've got uh, a lot of them also like own the factories. You know a lot of those brands are actually the factory sub brands. So we'll never get that kind of you know what I mean. We could never make money at that. Right. And so you go like yeah how how do we stand out? And it's like <laughs> it's it's got to it's got to scratch that itch of of familiar, but different. And um, I think that's, like I said, I think that's the balance because when you just start getting different for different sake, like that's tough, you know, that's like, that's- It can be very polarizing as well. We, yeah. We yeah, talked, we, talk, yeah. we, we have some, some pretty epic podcasts lined up and, you know, something that somebody brought to my attention is like these bigger brands, you know, brands that aren't considered micro brands they design watches from the inside out, right? Yeah. And brands like yours design watches from the outside in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and when they brought that to my attention um, and, the, and the way that they said it, I was like, oh, 
you know, like I never really like thought about it like that or really considered, you know, the design process of watches because as a, as a watch lover, I just know what I like, you know, yeah. I know what I respond to and I know what I know what I can get behind, but I don't really think about, you know, pen to paper. Right. Right. Yeah. No, I, I yeah, totally. I mean, I, I think, I mean, I, and, and you look at it too, like, I think there was that big, you know, there was that big push, like, I don't know, however many years ago where like everyone had to have in-house, you know, everyone had to have in-house, but like it's caused a ton of problems as far as, as far as service, as far as, far as, far as quality, because like we were saying earlier, unless you're truly innovating, unless you're really building something that can't be done by someone else, you know, for the most part, they're, they're using, you know, the same sort of existing inside movements, you know, whether it's done in this factory, or that factory. So like, you know, if you're not innovating, it's like, what's the best possible solution. But you know, for me, it's like, that and I think part of it too, is like where I came from as a fan, like some people, right, like some people, they, they're a fan exclusively of the inner workings of a watch and how the watch is spec'd out. Um, and that's great. Like you, it's not my, it's not my, not my place to tell you what you love about watches. You know what I mean? Um, but for me, I've always been drawn to the design. I've always been drawn to the storytelling. Um, you know, there's like, there's just this like, and we've all, you know, it's, it's in the books. It's in the, it's like, you know, like, a man and his watch you know what i mean and it's like it 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 is kind of the the package right it's like it's like what you see and like is it appropriate for the situation like you know you see people with like the right watch and the right like it it yeah to to me like you know you want it to be legitimate like you want the inside to make sense you know you you want the inside to be appropriate for what the watch is um but like, you know, that, that's why we've never really done like, and I, I wouldn't say we won't, but like, you know, we did a, we did a little bit on our manual line. We have like, um, the rhodium plated, um, bridge and we have, uh, we have nice. some, some text in there, but like, we haven't spent a ton of time on like custom rotors or custom things. And, um, you know, cause we just feel like, you know, like for me, it, it, it it's not like the driving thing. Like it's the, it's the total package, right? It's the, like, it's how it wears and you know, how you interact with it. So. What, uh, what's been the most challenging aspect of you for, for running, you know, running Vero and, and how have you overcame, you know, those, uh, those challenges? Yeah. Um, I mean, when we first started, you know, when we started kind of like the old way, um, that that was really tough in the sense of like um you know we you know you've got you've got the overhead of of having machines and having equipment and having people and and all that stuff um and, and that caused a lot of challenges that was tough you know we would you know we would have success like we would do we'd be able to make like you know a run of watches and then it was like if if those went well you know, we couldn't just pop out, you know, hundreds of them, like we couldn't just make a 1000 rallies, like it just, you know, <laughs> and so so that was kind of that world, you know, now, now that we've shifted, and now that we've done, you know, like, I mean, the tough thing is like, to your point is like, knowing what people respond to, um, you know, trying to figure out what that, you know, because it's, it's hard, like we, we haven't really set our some brands have done a better job of like, setting an expectation of like, here's the design, pre-order it, you'll get it in six months or a year. Um, I would love if we could do that, but we can't, we really have to bring, we got to give you the whole thing, you know? Um, and I say that like, you know, it's it, like, for me, like I also like shoes, I like sneakers, you know, like my, my kids like them, I like them, you know, it, what you want, like what you want from people, I think is like, you want like that's why custom doesn't really work like as a as a strategy like that like nike adidas they spent who knows maybe billions on customizing and they're a flop it's a flop right because people don't want they don't want my like they don't want to design it themselves 
they want that connection. They want like, when you design it and I connect, like they want that like, aha, like you get me moment, right? Like that, that's, that's my, that's my theory, right? Like, like when someone does a shoe or a watch and you're like, oh, we are on the same page. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like yep. that, that's to me, like, that's what gets me to like buy now. Right. And like, that could be a t-shirt, a pair of jeans, like it, you know, and it doesn't happen that much, right? Like it doesn't, like you've got to find the right people for the right, you know, like if every single person in my neighborhood thought the exact same thing, it wouldn't be that special, you know? So, so anyway, this is a long way of saying it, but it's like the tough thing is like, we have to, we have to sometimes like fully commit to this thing we don't know is going to work. You know, like we did not know that the workhorse, like people were like, you're, they're either going to laugh at us, you know? Or they're gonna love it like they're you know what i mean like we just we knew it was going to be a polarizing um i mean when we released it i was like actually shocked we got less insults than i thought you know like i was expecting <laughs> more backlash uh, you know and um so it's tough right it's like it, it's hard because it's hard from an investment perspective of like i'm gonna spend all this time on designing it prototyping it, getting it manufactured, taking photos, taking video, creating the content, building the website. You know what I mean? Like getting the email blast, do, you know, all the stuff, sending out the PR, you do all the stuff. And like, if it lands with a thud, you're like, Hmm. Okay. <laughs> like now, like now we've got this inventory. Now we've got, we spent all this time. Like we had, you know, you're projecting what you're going to make off of a release. You know, you can typically like, you know, you can typically, um, you can typically kind of figure like, okay, what we're going to get from organic, right? Just people who already follow us and are already going to buy what we're going to get from, from PR referrals. And then what we're going to get from, you know, paid. And if it doesn't hit, you know, the whole thing falls apart. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and every, every projection you have is like out the window. And so, you know, so it's tough. Like we just, you know, there's a, there's a big commitment you have to make and hope that people make that connection. Hope that enough people have that like, aha, you know? Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's hard, you know, it's, it's not just, um, you know, I, I think uh, that's, I, I give credit to the people that, that can, you know, successfully do like Kickstarter style brands because, um, I mean, you're asking a lot of people to like, like your like your idea, fund your idea ahead of time, yeah. and then get it down the road. Where like for us, we just like we've tried to play with pre orders. Like people just that from us, they they want it when we show it. Like that's kind of the deal. <laughs> that's kind of for better or worse. That's kind of the agreement we've made. Is <laughs> like people they don't want to wait. Like they they like no, I'll just buy it when it's ready. You know, and so a lot of. A lot of micro brands have that challenge of bringing a watch to market because they see it online. They'll see YouTubers review it, whatever, talk about mm -hmm. it. You're, you'll you'll put out your press release. You'll you know put out your white paper, mm -hmm. all your marketing material. But still, you know there is there has to be that connection when you pick up a watch, and it can't happen through the internet. And you know there's events like Wind Up, right? Thank gosh um, that they realize this and give you know customers an opportunity to see the watches before they purchase them. Um, but it, it leads me into like, you know, how, how do you guys look at marketing and how do you look at uh, your sales strategies and, and bring that into the company? Yeah, it's, it's a good point. I'd say that's, that's also right. That's also a really tough part of it is, you know, everything looks good online or everything doesn't quite look good enough. I mean, that, yeah, one of the things, I mean, that's that's one of the things we 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 struggle with, like we talk about probably weekly, is like we do feel like our watches in person are really strong. Like we feel like when you feel it, you feel the weight, you feel the balance. Like that was one of the things we learned from manufacturing. Like we spent a lot of time on like wrist feel and like what, you know, how you could make a watch, you know, maybe the specs seem weird, but it's wearable. You know, wearability is like a huge part of our design. Um, but that's hard to get across in, online. 
Um, the downside, like the downside to that is like, you know, it's, it's trying to get into retailers is very hard because obviously like they're owned by other brands, bigger, more established brands, you know, you're, you're losing, you know, that, you know, or you go to like maybe non-traditional retailers and people aren't there to buy watches, you know, they're not in that space. Um, you know, and then like, if you, you know, if you're, you know, like if you're doing retail, like you've got to have, you got to have a team, you got to be out there training the staff. You got to be, you got to have perks. You got like, you got to have a system in place to like really do that. And then, right. you know, and then show shows are, there's some advantage. There's a lot of advantages to shows, right? There's like, obviously like for a watch person to come in touch and feel the watches. You know, the downside is they're expensive. You know, you got it. Like we're going to, we're going to New York. We're going to wind up New York. Um, we're at San Francisco, but like, it's, it's an investment, you know, it's, it's not, you know, it's, it's an investment for the show itself and it's an investment to get there. Um, you know, and that's the other thing too, like, you know, where do you want to spend your time? Do you want to go do events and shows every week, you know, or do you want to like, so it, it's tough. I mean, it's a tough balance. Like we, we talk about it. Like we would love to do, like we we talk all the time about doing like a retail experience. Like I came from retail and one of the things I like about a retail shop is that you can, you can create the vibe for people, right? Like they can walk in, they can step in and they can get you right. The way you decorate it, the way you design it and the way you present it. Um, I, I, I love that. Right. Like I, I like if we ever got super big, I would want to go like open little boutiques, you know, at, or at cities because to me, like that's the way to do it. Like you can walk in, you can experience, but again, there's a lot of money. There's a lot of uh, time and effort and training. And, you know, you really need, you know, for, for us, like, you know, and for, for us, like Portland, like we're, we're in Portland, but like, we're not a local brand, like sales wise, you know, like the, Oregon's not in our top five, you know, um, I think it's in our top 10, but it's like, you know what I mean? Like we, if we sell, you know, like, you know, I mean, you know, if we had like, you know, like, you know, when we launched Smokey, you know, we get say 30, 40 orders, like well, on a day, like one or two of them are going to, Oregon, you know what I mean? And so, and they're going all over. And so for us, you know, we were like, look, all the downsides to D to C or a, a, like an e-commerce brand, which is exactly your point, Blake, like it's online. It's, it's, you don't get to touch them. You don't get to feel them. You don't get to whatever. Um, it's still for us the best way to, to reach the people that, that want our watches. Um, and so we try to do our best, you know, you obviously like you can return it, you know, there's that we have a return window. Um, we've, we had people that, you know, we did, we, we've had people like when we release something like not too many with a smoky, but like a few, um, and definitely like people with some of like our manual wines and things like they'll, they'll order both, you know, they'll order if they're choosing between the colors and sometimes they'll, they'll actually reach out and ask if it's okay. Uh, which we're like, yeah, of course. Um, but like, you know, sometimes they just order it and say, Hey, I just, I, I ordered both cause I wanted to pick the one I wanted in person. Um, we've thought about like, could we, could we enhance that? Ex could we enhance that online? Like, could we help people to understand? Like you can try it. It's tough. Like it's a tough balance because yeah, I mean, if, if I get, if I get, yeah, say 50 orders and they're in, 25 to 30 states you know <laughs> it's like you know like how, how do you really like how do you really make an investment into one spot you know what i mean yeah, yeah. yeah. and so like and, yeah and, and smoky like so, so like you know we found like you know obviously like like california we do really well texas we do really well new york we do well washington state we do well like florida we have these like we have these states where we like tend to like be strong but then with Smokey, like all these new states popped up, right? Like we were just like all of a sudden, like Massachusetts and Maine and North Carolina started like really taking like big chunks of orders. And um, in addition to the thing, so 
So every time we talk about like being a little bit more in person, it's like, yeah, but if it, if that's going to cost me 10 grand, you know, <laughs> to, to go do this, like what's putting that effort into an online, you know, strategy where, you know, how can we just improve that? How can we just improve that experience, you know, for those people? So, well, your customers also have to carry that cost, right? Like it's arg is pretty common to see, like, if you do, if you go to the retail environment and you buy a watch from an AD, you're paying more for mm -hmm. the same, right? right? You know, we've talked about this in some of our other podcasts, but it's the customer that carries the overhead costs of, of, you know, purchasing a watch from a retailer, you know, that's right. Right. Yeah. And, but, and how, how many people want to do that anymore? Because they can, they can, because then nothing. they can, right. They can go to the retailer and then go home and buy it online <laughs> cheaper, you know, it's right. And even, even the brands that, that tout like, Hey, this is an experience. This is a special experience. Yada, yada, yada. Uh, I picked up, um, I picked up a Rolex on my birthday oh, nice. and, um, and yeah, you know, I, I went there, I got a bottle of water, I got a little piece of chocolate and I walked out with a Rolex, you know, like, is it really that special? Right. Right. And of course I walked out with a huge hole in my pocket. Right. So, <laughs> yeah, I and mean, a hundred percent and you know and and obviously like the the margins make a difference right like if i'm selling a watch for eight thousand dollars there there's some room to play with you know to do that right like um and, and so yeah it's just but like if you're you know people you know and, and you're not going to do that for a sub thousand dollar watch like that's that's not you know, for and I, I spend a lot of time and, and I'm we're trying to get better and better. I think we did a pretty good job with Smokey. I think we did a good job with like our Safari special where like I'll, I'll definitely I'm we're definitely trying to like, you know, see how much we can create a unique experience when it comes to your door. Like because that, that part, too. Right. Like there's there's, you know, sometimes you you get a T-shirt. And it, you know, it's trapped in the plastic and it's stuck in a mailer and there's thank you. And you're like, okay, cool. And like, you like the t-shirt, but like, you know, there's people that do kind of blow you away, right? Like there's people where like you, you get the, like the box has like just a, a quote or a print and, you know, it's wrapped in this color versus that, like, and there's just like those little things and you're like, man, that's, that was thoughtful, you know? And like, that was, that was a, a nice touch. And so, um, you know, I think trying to like figure out how to get better and better at those kind of things, like, um, you know, how we can improve that experience so that, yeah, you're buying online, but it still feels personal. Um, I think yeah. that's like, that's a, that's a, it's tough to get right. You know, you don't always get it right. Um, but I think that's like for us where we try to think like, you know, it's not the same as walking in and meeting the person and them trying it on, but for the sake of us staying in business and you getting the watch at the price you want, you know, like, how can we, how can we make this, the situation we're in be the best it can be? Yeah. I'm curious. And, and you alluded to, to it before in the podcast earlier, but um, you know, you talked about pricing and online, you know, all the keyboard, the keyboard warriors, you know, they're like, Oh, mm -hmm. you, you, like I used to work for a Swiss watch brand. Uh, I'm not going to say who, not yet. Um, but they started off in 1924. So they've been around a long time. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, and, you know, I, w I was, we were doing ads, we were doing their website, you know, yeah, we, were, yeah. we were responsible for most of that. And, you know, the trolls would come out and say, oh, you know, our, our average, you know, our average order value was, um, you know, 1,800, 2,500, yeah. somewhere within that, just depending. Yeah, yeah. But then you get people coming out saying like, oh, you know, 2K for a Salita or like, you know, da, 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 da. So they don't, they don't really look at the, the whole overall package and they just look at the, the cost of the movement and yeah. then they, they, they bring yeah. that into, okay, well, it costs $300 or $200 to buy the movement. The watch should be $1,000, 800 right. <laughs> but then you look at you look at brands that so the only reason why I bring this up is because you know you you alluded to it earlier 
Um, and those trolls are out there, right? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. And where they have some artificial um, realistic expectation of what a watch should cost when they really have no yeah, yeah. damn idea. Right. So you have brands like CW, Christopher Ward, that mm-hmm. embrace it and say, look, here's how we price our watches. Like right. we take the cost of the watch and we double it. Right. So is is there an opportunity for you to come out on the record and say, hey, here's how we price our watches? Um, not that I've heard anything bad about Vero yeah, in yeah. terms of pricing. No, no. But- well, yeah, it's it's yeah, there's always I mean, yeah, it's you know, the part to me that I, I kind of have to laugh off is like you go to like, you know, someone will obviously, oh, my God, I would, you know, that's that's worth this much. You could buy you could buy this for that price, and then you go go to their Instagram. There's people shitting on them and their pricing, and well, yeah, but you've got terrible quality control, and you you know it's like you just like you're not gonna win, right? Like you're not gonna win against someone that's like there to be negative, and so we just you know for a certain to a certain aspect, we like we just kind of go like like my thing is like you know like we don't unless like unless you're saying something vulgar, like unless you're saying like like really like offensive language like we don't you know we don't moderate comments right like you can say your watch sucks i hate it and i'm not gonna delete it you know it's like but i'm not gonna i'm not gonna comment on it right if and i'm like like we're we're here to like the whole thing is like there there's something i heard there was a uh it was some podcast and it was some business guy you know i don't know um apologies to whoever i took it from you know but (laughs) he was like he was like stop wasting time talking to people that don't want to listen to you like and and i think it makes a lot of sense is like you know like a lot of people like and we we used to i mean we do it happened with like uh when i had a retail shop right like you know you get 100 people walk in the door and like someone might like literally like send you a bottle of wine another person will give you a thank you note you know two more people came in from referral like one person says something negative and it ruins your day and you're like, that's one person, you know, you, you got to just, so for us, it's like, look, if you're bringing positivity, we're going to respond. Like, we're going to talk to you. We're going to interact. If you're genuinely asking questions, if you're like this, like this seems really high for what you get, I'll, I'll say like, oh, well, we, it's, it, it's this, it's that, it comes with this, we do this. And we've had some people that have been like, literally like have bought a watch, like, I'm going to give this a shot. Like, uh, you know, or we've had people like come to our rescue where someone will say, oh, it's too expensive. And then the person comments. And so for the most part, we we let it go. And I just go, I kind of go like you're looking for a reaction. Most of the time, it's not even like, that the watch is expensive or ugly or anything. It's just you're just looking for a reaction and you can get a reaction through positivity or you can get a reaction through negativity. And so for us, we're like, you know, we're going to interact with you with people in a positive way. And if like, if that's not the game you want to play, then you can be in your sandbox, you know, (laughs) and like, and if other people choose to engage with you and you get what you want out of it, it actually helps us because when conversations happen and people get into these little shouting matches, you know, Facebook, Instagram is like, this is something valuable. More people want to see this. It doesn't really even hurt us that bad. Like if you, if you were going to buy our watch, if you saw Smokey and you've like, God damn, I love that watch. And I can afford it. Like if you're sitting there, like if you're sitting there going like, yeah, I'll spend 450 on a watch and this is a watch I want. Some troll on the internet saying, Well, I could buy a, a Seiko this for less. You're not gonna be like, damn, I guess I should just buy that Seiko. You're like, if that Seiko didn't speak and Seiko's awesome. I'm not tra- you know, but like if that yeah, Seiko course. doesn't sing to you if you want the smoky, you want the smoky, like, you know what I mean? And so right. I, I kind of, you know, it's, you know, sometimes it is like, sometimes you're like, come on, man, like we're, we're real people here, you know? And we just, you know, but at the same time, like you just have to be like, like, this is, this is part of the, this is part of what you signed up for. You're an e-commerce business and you're going to post yep. on social media and you're, you're going to run at, and you're going to run ads. Like that's the other part where I'm like, I can't get too like, we're also, we're not just in our own little private thing like we're running an ad so like you saying you put this on my feed screw you like that's actually fair like that's your right that's not what i do like if i don't like something i just move on you know but i I also go like look we're you know what i mean like we're we're big boys like we're playing you know what i mean like we we've we've told you like have an opinion and and if 
every opinion can't be like the the biggest thing I say is like if if you walked around and you saw a hundred dudes, how many of them like match your style and aesthetic? Like zero. Yeah, very few, right? <laughs> very few. It's almost like you see someone, and you're like, oh damn, like oh look at that watch that guy's wearing. You know, like anytime someone walks in with like it walks somewhere with a watch, my family like automatically they look at me and they go, what watch is he wearing? Because they know yeah. like. But that's, but that's like only a couple of us, right? You know? And so you're like, right. look, most people aren't going to like what you offer, even if you make it, even if it's yeah. awesome. Like, so I'm always walking in public. Like, I wonder if anybody will realize what watch I'm wearing today. And I <laughs> never get anything yeah. for it, but only I know. <laughs> yeah. It's, you know, and, and those times when someone does, it's like a cool thing, you know, but it's like, super. yeah. So it's, it's just the, you know, it's just part of like. When I worked, when I worked at the AD like a while ago, um, you know, I first came in, I first started, I was focused on selling watches. Right. Um, and pretty quickly you realize like when everybody's looking at you and you haven't sold a watch for like a week and a half, you know, or two weeks, you're like, like, I have no money coming in if I'm not selling (laughs) watches. So you kind of assess yourself super quickly. And then one of my colleagues at the time was like, don't focus on selling watches, just focus on building friendships and creating emotional interactions, right? Totally. Oh, totally. like what, what is it you use this watch for? Like how, how is this watch going to complement your lifestyle? Yeah. Um, you know, like, like wh- what do you typically wear on a daily basis? Oh, okay. You know, you're a guy that wears a suit and tie half of the week and, you know, gyms and, you know, gym shorts and sweatpants the rest of the right. week. Like you need a, a, a versatile watch. I'm not going to show you like a, a Grand Seiko dress watch. Like I'm going right. to show you like something that's got a versatile side to it. And then people get in these buying patterns where you're you, there's, there's a, the triangle that we talked about emotion, logic, and reason. Mm-hmm. And when somebody is in between that triangle, they're going to click the buy button or pull out their debit card or whatever. Yeah. Right. So getting right. somebody into that, and then people will form those connections themselves. You know, they'll see the smoky, they'll see, you know, the workhorse. Um, yep. And then they'll be like, dude, this is a great watch. I respond to this. Like, I'm just going to pull the trigger. Yeah. Right. Because you have all the, the means to allow them to do that. Like no holds bar. Um, and then, you know, the people that are talking on online aren't the ones that are buying watches. You know, they're the ones that, you know, have an affiliate link somehow to Seiko or, you know, whatever. Right. Like, right. And, and, and that's one thing that's really disappointed me, um, you know, with, with the industry, you know, like everybody has some incentive, right. right. You know, yeah. to trash Vero or to, to promote Seiko or yeah, whatever. Um, and that's where we created the opportunity for this podcast. You know, we wanted we don't sell watches like you sell right. watches, yeah. you know, like our listeners will hopefully buy your watches. Right. But, um, but we just wanted to, to get to the truth, the bottom of the barrel, like the reason, you know, having an understanding of, of the brand, their psyche, yeah. the way that they make decisions and, and let people make their own, their own decision. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I think like, too, like it, it is, it is interesting because, you know, as, yeah, I mean, the internet, is, and we're on the internet, so we're not, I'm not like acting like I'm above it, you know, we're right. you know, on Instagram and we're on, you know, but it's like, I, I personally, like, I, I will, I'll see something I like, but like, I'm not a big commenter, I'm not a big liker, you know, like, I, but I'll, I'll see it and then I'll go look at it and then, it, yeah, if it speaks to me, I buy it. And so it's like, that's the thing, right? It's like, you can, you can do it, right? You can be like, oh, look, there were, you know, this many negative comments today, but how many watches do we sell? You know, like, and you're like, oh, if that, you know, if that ratio is, and, and what I found was, what I found is, is, is two things. Like one is the, the toughest times we have is when everyone's kind of like, oh, that's, that's nice. Like when we make a nice watch at a nice price with good, spe- like it's tough because no one's really has anything bad to say, but it didn't, it didn't hit that like. God, I need this. It didn't, yeah. it, it's, it's not that like you, it's not that visceral. I hate that or I love that. And, and so when you make a product that 
you know, you, if you're making something with the hopes that people are going to love it or hate it, people are going to hate it. You know what I mean? Like that, that's just how it's going to work, you know? Um, and so you gotta, you gotta kind of brace yourself for it. You gotta be like, you know, like, Hey, like if, if we're not, if we're not eliciting a strong reaction, you know, then, then it's, it's probably not going to be a great month, you know? Um, you know, and the other thing too, like I would say like, and it is like, I, I feel like sometimes, you know, other people feel like they have to say like this brand or that brand. Um, but like watch people for the most part, they're collectors. They buy a lot of watches, you know? And, and I think for me, I found is like, I don't have to beat like, I don't know, like, like fair. Like I'm, I, I like fair. I think they're a great brand, you know? Um, <laughs> but like, I don't have to be better than fair. Like I've got to make something that's compelling. And if that person loves Smokey, then they're, you know, some people, you know, they might wait a little while or like if they like the new fair, like they might not buy our watch right away, but if they like what we sell, they're not gonna be like, well, I'll only buy fair. Like some people, you know, there's a couple people, but for the most part, they're going to buy that and then they'll buy one of ours and then they'll buy like the next thing that they like. And you know I mean? It's, it's not Hold their own opinions and stuff. Yeah. It's not like a, you know, it's a pretty like, I, I definitely, you know I mean? It, it's an, it's an enthusiast market, you know? So it's not really, you don't really have to necessarily be better, but you have to be, but it has to stand up. Right. Like, yeah. If we said, if our watch is spec a certain way, and like, yeah, it's a little more expensive than something you could get. It's fine. If it's $6,000, if Smokey was six grand, like it wouldn't, you know, people would be like, you're so far out of whack yeah. of what the market asked for. And I think that's the other thing too. Like, Blake, this is like way back, which you asked earlier about like, you know, like Christopher Ward's pricing and stuff. And like, I get that. But the other thing is like the other side for us is like, we somewhat price the market, you know, and, and we look at like where we think it fits and like, what kind of, like I knew in my head right away, I was like, this watch, like, this was one of the things we knew about Smokey was like, it's going to be a sub $500 automatic. Now for some people, that's not enough, you know, uh, for some people it's a steal, you know, I, I think, I think so. and so I'm like, you know, we have watch it. And so the, the, the thing is, is like, sometimes if we order enough watches we believe in enough and we get the price right like we make the margin that we want to make on it. like we don't have anything that's like some crazy like 10 20 x like we just don't have that but like we have some things that are actually lower than what anyone would want for a margin even the watch industry because we're like yes like like our workhorse I'll, t I'll say it like if you guys want something inside like our workhorse like we don't make enough on our workhorse and the people that go like it's four hundred twenty five dollar course like with everything in that watch with everything that we didn't compromise on we should like it should be more it, it really we should sell it in that six something and there are brands are selling courses at the like six to seven Michelle range but we felt like it, people just aren't gonna have a taste for that like they're just not going to be able to justify that price so like our workhorse like we're working to get the margin down but like if we just said hey look this is what we do everything's a flat you know whatever double or like whatever your margin is it, yes it would be transparent but it doesn't mean people would buy it you know because people might say well that's great that your watch should be eighteen hundred dollars i'm not gonna pay eighteen hundred dollars for it you know what i mean it's like if we just said if we just you know took Oris or and Christopher Ward, their main, I, I like Christopher Ward, so this is an insult, but like their main investor is a factory. So they're getting, they're not getting our pricing on builds, which they should, right. they should get the best price. It's not an insult. It's a, you know, it's a compliment. It's a smart sure. strategic decision, but you're like, the point is, is I can't price my watches at a Oris or a Christopher Ward margin because they have better terms than we do. So like they, they're, they're going to probably make more per watch, but they've earned that right. That's okay. You know what I mean? But for us to just go, well, Hey, this is what the industry does. This is where we price things. You're like, fine. But the, the customer decides how much they're going to pay for it. You know? So for us, like there are certain things we have our, our healthy margin that we feel like is like a really good margin. Then we have other ones where we're like, 
could really we could really add a hundred dollars to this watch um you know and then so then it becomes like can we work with the factory can we how many do we have to order to get our price down like you know what i mean like it's on us okay. but I, <laughs> but yeah but i but i think like you know i think you 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 know for we're not in a place like where we we don't dictate the market like we're not a brand that dictates the market you know rolex can dictate the market omega can but you know like a lot of these brands can and even in a a smaller brand space maybe a christopher ward or someone you know can can sort of or like oris who's not really a micro brand but kind of plays in that field like they can and they're I, i'm fans of both but like you know they, they can somewhat dictate like this is the watch this is the price and they've got sort of an, like we, we have to follow suit a little bit we have to kind of either come in under or come in at or so you know for us it's it's not always a, a you know there's an ideal <laughs> and then there's a the, like, reality we didn't talk too much about like sustainability um and we're you know we're getting here to the end of our time yeah, so yeah. um but you know obviously there has to be that sustainability factor of of your business right like like if if you're the the best band in the world the best the best thing since sliced bread you guys have awesome watches awesome designs you're very unique i'm super glad you came on um but at the end of the day if if you don't have the sustainability aspect of your business and you go belly up like we all lose not only right. you but we all lose as watch collectors right yeah you know yeah. And, I, and then the only thing that we the only way we'd ever be able to pick up a workhorse or you know uh, an sw is through ebay or whatever right. and then i mean we all yeah. lose right yeah so yeah it's all totally. you look at you look at brands like like omega or rolex like the omega did has already done i think two price increases this year yeah you know yep um because they just realized like the cost of goods the cost of materials like labor is becoming more expensive like mm -hmm. the dollar is worth less than it's ever been you know like yeah. there's there's a combination of factors here you know it costs more to get a watch onshore than it does to produce it you know right so right yeah you know. yeah yeah it's no i mean it, it, it is it's a big part i mean it's a big part of like what we talk about and, and what we what we're trying to get you know it's like you you do you've got to figure it out like you know you do hope that you have some support from your customers if they recognize that that they recognize like hey look we can't we can't give you a, a bunch of deals or you know um yeah, right but I, you know and, and we just you know we look at it and like i you know i could even you know i could be better at it you know but it's like you know, we we know like we're like look we we do we have to you know we have to make this much to make <laughs> payroll right. and to order the next thing and so you know it's a balance right like it's it's a it's a balance of like you know either you know how many do we sell or how much do we make per watch and you know what i mean and and where where's the balance like you know if we charge more for these things we sell less but it it works out or you know yeah. or we we make, you know, twice as many and, you know, you get the lower margin, but you get a higher economy of scale because, you know, these costs are fixed and, you know, I mean, like it, it's a, it's a numbers game, you know, I, I would, I mean, my dream would just be like to be the R and D guy, you know, <laughs> here and only, you know, just someone give me a budget and let me come up with new watches. But, you know, like, yeah, we've got to, we've got to constantly be trying to figure out like, you know, where that sweet spot is. I mean, cause always. Yeah, there's ads, there's there's content, there's yep. design, there's manufacturing. I'll, uh, I'll yeah. piggyback off of what Blake um, just said, and this this will be my last question for you, Chris. I don't want to keep you going too yeah. much past your time or anything. Um, where do you guys see uh, the the Vera Watch Company within the next five to ten years? Predicting you know, the future, every everything, you know, working out. Biggest brand in the world. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I mean, look, we've, we've got, um, you know, we've got a pipeline sort of, of, of design over the next like two to three years. Um, and we had, you know, we had sort of, we had some goals, um, that were over the first three years of like the, the relaunch, I guess, you know, um, and, and we've been able to hit them, you know, and, and. Uh, a lot, you know, a lot of it was just really heavily focused on growth, right? 
and then you know now it, it's it's growth but it's also like basically picking the winners and you know and, and tightening the ship as far as like what we spend money on what we spend time on um and then you know there so there's you know there's there's growing the brand there's new partnerships uh you know there there's new design um you know getting to like you know there there's like you know numbers that we want to hit that that make us sustainable and allow us to do some of these things we talked about do some of these more you know for me it's it's a matter of getting to the point where we can have um you know more money and more time to do like the skunk works type of thought the, the those kind of ideas you know where where we can be innovative and be creative and and take that next step where we you know where we could do something that's not available you know and so you know to do that you've got to you know you've got to grow the brand right you've got to find what watches people like you know what they respond to what a version to that gets them to rebuy plus gets you know x number of new customers and so i mean it's it can be kind of boring you know what i mean it's like you kind of just have to like you have to keep pushing growth and keep being more efficient and you know for us, we're, you know, we're trying to build, you know, build a company that, that, you know, our, our staff can make a living. <laughs> we can continue to create and support watches and, you know, and then we can get to that stage where, you know, where we are doing some things that, that aren't, um, aren't available anywhere else outside of just a design. So. Yeah. Wow. Well, we want to end it on a positive note. Um, Everybody, thank you so much for hanging in there. Um, one hour and almost 52 minutes. This has been an epic one. <laughs> Chris, yeah, we can't thank. Just going to say we, we appreciate you, Chris. <laughs> yeah, we can't we can't thank you enough for your time. Mm -hmm. um, everybody go in the descriptions now and, and buy all the Vero watches. <laughs> um, and until next time, we'll see you on the next one. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. It was a lot of fun. Thank you so Thanks much. Everyone. All right.